Have you ever thought that you could take your drawing and turn it into a doll, an actual character doll? This is Samantha. She is one of my main characters for Sam and Jolene. She is the fashionista of the group. And maybe it'll help you have some ideas for yourself. When I created this doll, I really wanted to give her the appearance of the more is more kind of girl. You know, the girl that just can never get enough, never get enough shoes, never get enough jewelry. And her personality is so much unlike her friend Jolene because she is just well, for one thing, she loves to shop and she absolutely loves clothes. So I made this doll with a lot of details that I feel a fashionista girl would really enjoy. So I made these earrings and I did a hand stitch on them, created with felt. And I really wanted her earrings to pop with personality because she really is a very over the top kind of person. So uh, she has these really cute smiley face sequins hand sewn onto her collar and I really wanted to give her just a little sparkle and pizzazz. The t-shirt dress that she's wearing currently is actually one of her signature looks. She has a purple polka dotted outfit normally or in general it's either a polka dot or some kind of polka dot fashion but whatever it is it's always over the top. So what I did was I used a regular jersey t-shirt and I resized it to fit the doll. And then what I did was I added some fabric painted polka dots on top of the dress. And you can see it took a lot of effort just to put all those little sequins on there, but I love the way it turned out. She also has a really cute pair of leg warmers. And then also one of the fine details that I love about her is her little friendship bracelet. I am a big fan of smiley faces. They just, well, they make you happy. My main characters, they actually all have something that makes them their signature. She can be found wearing bracelets a lot. Also, I added a scrunchie to her hair because scrunchies are a big thing back in the 90s. And so I wanted her to have that scrunchie because of course she'd be wearing a scrunchie. So Samantha is, as you can see, very fashionable. And we're gonna do something special today and create something to add on top of her outfit. It's actually the finishing touch I've been waiting to show everybody in this video. Kind of semi-obsessed with using reusable materials. Um, I like the idea of upcycling things. I have a piece of pink tool here and the piece is approximately 56 inches by 12 inches. This would vary based on the size of your doll or your character. In my case, I'm going to cut the end off and just get two pieces that are the same size roughly. So I'll have two pieces, I believe it's 28 by 12. So those two pieces will be for that. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the neon green. Okay, so I've decided to fold it in half again lengthwise and then I'm gonna cut it again to get four pieces of the same length. And because it's a little bit tricky, I think I will pin it first. I'm just gonna cut it down the middle, just like I did before. I'm also gonna do the same thing with the other color and pin that as well. So I'm just gonna take all these pins out So I'm gonna alternate between the pink and the neon green and just lay them on top of each other. Okay, so I'm gonna sew the tool together, but in order to do that, I want to have something for the machine to, the sewing machine to grip onto. So I'm going to take some tissue paper and cut it into strips and use that as my under layer. So I'm not going to worry too much about lining up all these different pieces of tool. Instead, I'm just going to lay the tissue paper on top and then sew straight through it and then I will trim off the excess. So to keep the machine from pulling the tool inside of the machine, I'm putting the tissue paper behind the tool and I'm going to pin it on top. So you can see there's a zigzag stitch all the way to the end. And then I guess the beautiful thing about this method is that you can just pull the tissue paper right off. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I realized that I needed to use a straight stitch for the gathering seam. So I'm putting another piece of tissue paper underneath and I'm gonna sew a very wide gathering stitch down the edge. I find it helps to hold the thread while you're sewing. And 
and it looks like I'll be able to pull this stitch, but I'll have to be really careful and I will go around to make the gathers. Okay, so you can see I've got that nice gathered look and we're gonna see how it looks like on the doll. I honestly can't decide which side I like better, if I like the neon green or the neon pink. Tell me in the comments what you think. All right, so I'm gonna put this around her waist and turn her over and let's just see how big this needs to be. It looks like I need to give it a little bit more width for the waistband. So all I need to do is pull the gathers out just a little bit more and then replace it on top of the doll. When I was a teenager, I used to make Barbie clothes all the time. And so this kind of thing just brings me back to that time. I remember going to Joanne Fabrics and buying patterns and using those patterns to make all kinds of fun Barbie clothes. So that's a great memory that I have. Next, I'm gonna just trim the excess fabric off the top here because I don't really need that. Okay, so I have my ribbon that I'm going to use for the waistband and I'm going to cut it into the width of the skirt, which I know is about 12 inches. So I'm gonna give it a half inch extra and I'm just gonna cut about a half inch over there. I always like to have a little bit too much then to run out. So I'm just going to pin it down all the way down on top of the elastic so that the edge of the ribbon lines up. So now I'm just going to take this to the sewing machine and stitch down the edge right next to where these pins are. So I'm going to remove the excess bulk on top here, right above the elastic, but not cut the actual elastic. That will give me room to put my ribbon over top the other side of the skirt. Next, I'm going to hand sew the ribbon to the back. I could use a sewing machine, but I think it would give it a much nicer finish to use a hand sewing needle. And that's a good tip. So whenever you feel like you can't get a really good result with a sewing machine, hand sewing is always a good thing to fall back on. So I'm going to do that to give it a nice clean edge on the back. Also, I don't want to put any stitching on the front of this because it's just so pretty the way it is. So I'm going to pull my needle up behind the back of the ribbon so it doesn't show. I have a little bit of a knot in there and I'm using one strand of thread so I have the finest detail. And then I'm just going to work my way down this ribbon. So the way you would do that is, because I know this is going to get covered up, bring it up behind it and then the stitch is kind of tricky to get started but once you get the hang of it it's easiest so just make a little stitch and then go up again and then you can use that pin to help you or this clip here to hold hold it down a little bit and then just make that simple little stitch and then just go into the fabric again and up through the ribbon I don't know if you can see that very well and then just do the same thing this stitch can be called many things, but essentially what you're trying to do is hide the stitch as much as possible. So working from your right to your left is effective. If you are righty, that's how you would get that ribbon on there without showing or showing through to the other side. Now the main thing to do when hand sewing, it's difficult at first, but just try to keep your stitches as small as you can so you hide them. And I think it just comes with practice a lot of times, but just... But just remember like having that control over your needle is what gives you the good result that you want so it looks nice so you can see it doesn't really show the stitch very well it's going to be on the inside of the skirt but i kind of like to know that i put that effort in so i'm just going to keep going all the way down and just remember don't worry about the front of the skirt just focus on the ribbon on the back because the front is already sewed on so we're almost to the very edge of the skirt ribbon and like I said, it does get easier the more you do it, the more you practice. But by the time you get to that edge, you're going to be a you're going to be a pro. If you want an even better result, I would recommend just sewing shut the edge of the ribbon so there's no fraying at all. Okay, so I finished hand stitching the ribbon to the skirt and I sewed the edges shut so that there's no fraying. Okay, to finish this skirt, we're going to use a hook and eye to attach the skirt together. And it's going to basically start by latching 
the hook down first and then we're going to do the eyelets after that. Okay, so I sewed the hook on and now I'm going to do a locking stitch on the eyes. To make a locking stitch, we're just going to go right into the eye and pull it through. But before we pull it through all the way, we're going to go through the loop and then that will hold the eye on. So just keep doing that, several of them on each eye. Okay, so this is a little bit of a tricky part, but do you see how that little loop kind of angles up? It's kind of hard to see, but you want that to be facing up on the edge of the fabric and you want it to just peek out just a little bit so that the hook can grab on to the eye. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to sew through the loops, through the little um, hoops here, and then I'm going to sew again on the edge to make this attach to the ribbon. But again, just go through that that loop and then pull the needle through the loop to make that locking stitch. So you'll just repeat that. Okay, so you're not confused. You can see how I did stitches here and here and on the eyes of the little um, eye. <laughs> um, so you can see it is sewed down very well and it's not going to slip. So that's the goal. Okay, so with that hook and eye closure, we can just hook the doll's waistband together. And if we flip it over, you can see that it fits her just right. So there's only one other detail that I want to do, and that's to take a little bit of length off of this skirt. So we're going to do that next. Okay, so I'm going to cut it from the underside so that I can see all the layers. Okay, so I am extremely excited about how this turned out. Um, it just turned out exactly the way I envisioned it. Just a cute little ballet skirt with the flare on the edge. This is such a perfect fashionista outfit for a doll. And I love the ribbon detail on the skirt and the way that it just attaches to the back. I just love it. I think it's really great. I think that if I had tried to sew the back, it would have been very difficult to put this on. But as it is, it shows all of the cute detail. So Samantha is complete. Her outfit has taken a lot of time and effort, but I really think that when you put love into the things that you make, you have beautiful results. So this has been a wonderful project and I hope that you've enjoyed it as well. Thanks for watching Samantha's debut tutorial, and we'll see you next time. Bye!